I cannot believe that I heard Dave Ramsey say what he just said. Now, if you don't know who Dave Ramsey is and you're watching a real estate and finance channel, go ahead and Google him. He's probably the most famous financial personality in the Western world. Over the past three decades, Dave has used his personal testimony of getting out of incredible debt to help teach finance through books like Financial Peace, courses like Financial Peace University, and his radio show. He has told people to cut credit cards, watch their debt, keep a tight financial budget, and rein in spending in order to take control of your financial life. He's one of the most conservative financial personalities out there, and he's garnered a lot of followers as well as many critics for his aggressive approach to getting out of debt. In recent years, he's taken strong and heavy stances against investments like cryptocurrency and meme stocks. And he almost never makes definitive statements about what the market is or is not going to do. Which is what made this statement all the more surprising. Right now is a, the best time to buy a house in the next five years. Right now. Hmm. And here's why. Okay, Prices are not going to go down. Some of you are saying, well, I'm going to wait for prices to come down. You're, you're, you're not going to get them. Yeah. They're not coming down. Yeah. Okay. They're going to go up slower, but they're not going to go down. Now, what's interesting about this statement is that in a lot of areas, housing prices have already began to drop. And it looks like there's going to be a heavy increase in the amount of people that are going to be listing their houses, which will continue to drop the price. I'll tell you both anecdotally by talking to other realtors and my own experience, as well as according to the numbers that we have seen a sharp decline in interested buyers and a sharp rise in the amount of sellers that want to put their house on the market. As a result, we have seen a decrease in the average price per house sold, and we've seen a higher percentage of sellers cutting their price in order to stay competitive in the market. So Dave is just objectively wrong on this one, but it's also really concerning for another reason. One of the biggest criticisms Dave Ramsey gets is that he creates a one-size-fits-all approach to personal finance. The fact of the matter is not everybody who can buy a house should buy a house right now. Now, I'm a real estate agent. I am incentivized to tell you to buy houses and to sell them. I make money when you do that. And by the way, if you do live in the area of South Carolina and you're interested in selling or buying houses, go to AskJeremySC.com. But that being said, I also feel a huge responsibility to state that not everybody's situation is the same. Just because you can get a loan for a house doesn't necessarily mean that you can actually afford to pay that loan on a monthly basis. Now, for those who can't afford it, I highly recommend it. As I've stated before, I myself have gotten out of tens of thousands of dollars of debt and now have a positive six-figure net worth. And real estate played a huge key in that. And I myself am under contract to buy another house that I am going to rent out. But all my properties have people in it that are paying rent to me. That includes the house that I live in myself. So obviously I'm a big fan of real estate. But the question is, does real estate make sense for you? Well, you have to consider a few things. Number one, what does your emergency fund look like? If you currently don't have an emergency fund, that is something that you need to get started before you consider home ownership. Because when you own a home, it's your responsibility to take care of anything that's broken and needs to be repaired or replaced. Things like roof repairs and a new HVAC system can cost tens of thousands of dollars. And everyone should have at least six months of emergency fund anyways, just in case something happens like you lose your job. Number two, can you afford to pay a mortgage month to month? Now, if you can find a mortgage that's equivalent or better price than what you're currently paying in rent, then great. Now, remember, when you're talking about mortgage, we're not just talking about the amount that you're paying back the bank, but also the taxes and the insurance that go along with it. Additionally, you need to get a good idea of what that first initial payment is going to be, the one that you're going to be bringing to close on the house. If that first payment completely wipes out your emergency fund, it might be a good idea to wait and save up some more money. Now, keep in mind, I'm a huge fan of house hacking. If you're not familiar with house hacking, it's renting out rooms to the place that you currently own. Although people who are renting can do that as well. But keep in mind, there's no guarantee that just because you have a house that people will automatically want to rent from you. You may have to go for periods of time without having any tenants in those rooms. Additionally, not every tenant is the best tenant in the world to have. Always make sure you have a contract in order to protect yourself. And keep in mind that your tenants may create damage that costs more than their rent is currently benefiting you. 
That's why it's always a good idea to have a security deposit to protect yourself from any damages. The main point of this response is just to say that no one can predict the future and no one knows exactly what's going to happen with the housing market. Although long term, real estate has been the best asset when it comes to returns and overall growth in the market. But being a homeowner is complicated and you should be aware of the risk. If you have any questions about real estate or wealth building in general, feel free to comment down below. Or as I said before, you can always check out AskJeremySC.com. Thanks guys. Have a great day.